and because it really works. Now, with your email marketing, you would die. You'd be so ecstatic, right? Happy, I mean die in a good way. If you had 80% open rates and over 20% click rates. With Facebook Messenger and chatbots using MobileMonkey, you can get there. See, the way it works is you can go to MobileMonkey and test it out. You go to Mobile Monkey. you'll see in the bottom right corner, if anyone's logged into Facebook, if they're not, it'll ask them to. They can start chatting with you. As they chat with you, you'll then get their Facebook Messenger information so that way you can start messaging them. That's without them giving you their name, email address, or anything. It's just a great way to get more people. There's a bot. The bot starts giving them auto-rated responses, and you can then go put your most frequently asked questions in there. And if you want, you can you know, um, start taking it over manually and start answering people's questions. So for example, with Mobile Monkey, I asked a simple question of how much does Mobile Monkey cost? That's a common question. So the bot responds back. If it's a non-common question, you can have a human on your team responding back. As you respond back, you'll get more engagement. And here's what's cool about Mobile Monkey, right? You can program with your most frequently asked questions as I mentioned. You can take over as a human. The click-through rates are insane, right? 80 plus percent open rates. You should have 20 plus percent click-through rates. That's huge. Not like email marketing where you get a few percentage of the people actually clicking through. This is 20 plus percent. It's easier to get opt-ins and emails because no one has to put in their name and email address. Just by chatting with you, Facebook just gives you their information. And don't worry, you're not breaking any privacy stuff. It's more so Facebook gives it to you with their approval. You don't have to deal with spam filters like emails or anything. When you send an email, you don't even know if it's going to people's inbox. Most emails start going to a spam box. Then from there, if you're lucky to not be in the spam box, you're going to be in like the Gmail promotion tab. But with Mobile Monkey, you don't have to deal with any of that. If you want to get the most out of Mobile Monkey as you're building up your subscriber base, Make sure you send out a blast at least four times a week. If you don't send out a blast often enough, you won't get as much traffic. And you'll also realize that, hey, every time you send out a blast, you'll get some unsubscribes. That's okay. The easier it is for someone to subscribe because it's pretty much automated, it also makes it easier for people to unsubscribe. But again, that's okay because it's really easy to build a subscriber base and you want to be communicating on a regular basis so you can get the traffic as much as possible, more so as frequently as possible. The third tool I have for you is Google Search Console. I know I mentioned this in a bit in tool number one and combining with Ubersuggest, but I'm going to show you something a bit different that most people aren't doing in Google Search Console. Most people aren't using it to run SEO split tests. And here's what I mean. Anytime you do a Google search, and not, not just you, just imagine a thousand people, including you, are doing a Google search for a keyword. You type in that keyword like digital marketing. And if everyone out of a thousand people, you know, let's say a hundred percent out of everyone, everyone's clicking on the second listing. From Google's perspective, if people are clicking on the second listing but not the first listing, what does that tell them? It tells them, hey Google, the second listing is more relevant than the first one. So they should move the second listing to number one and the first listing to number two. So to get the most amount of clicks, it's not just about where you rank, it's about creating attractive title tag. And here's what I want you to do. Go log into Google Search Console, select your site, then click on performance, and then click on average CTR. Your screen should look like this. You want to click on average CTR. You see where it says 2.2%. That's what you need to click on. Once you click on, you'll see another line. And as you scroll down, you want to find the keywords that have less than a 2% click-through rate. That means you're ranking for these keywords, you're getting impressions, but you're just not getting enough clicks. By optimizing your click-through rate, what you'll find is you'll be able to generate way more visitors. And here's how you do this. You take your title tag. You consider doing some of these seven things. You don't have to do all of them, but just seven, right? You, but just take a few of the steps. So the first one is use numbers or negative words. If use numbers or negative words, think of like a magazine article, 
They stand out. 13 ways to lose weight in one week. 13 ways to shed 5 pounds. People also love title tags with what is. For example, what is SEO? A lot of people don't know SEO, right? You guys all do, but most people don't know what the word SEO stands for, what it means, or how it works. So creating title tags like that is a great way to get more traffic. Include the keyword towards the front. If you include the keyword towards the front, you're much more likely to get the clicks. If you're not sure what kind of title tags to create, what kind of copy to put in there, look at the pay-per-click ads. It'll give you ideas, because typically the ones at the top are generating the most clicks. I found that also when you create title tags with roughly six words, it does better than if it's four words or five words or if it's nine or 10 words. It's not an exact science, but that's what it averaged out to when we were running the study on RN. And if you have five words or six or seven or eight, that's fine, but in general, you want to stay around there. You want to try to use power words or adjectives, and I'll show you that in a bit. And you also want to try to evoke curiosity, which I'll also show you right after I talk about power words and adjectives. So here's an example of interesting adjectives. Absolute, strange, incredible, effortless, unique. Think of it this way. Would you rather read an article called 13 Ways to Double Your Search Traffic or 13 Effortless Ways to Double Your Search Traffic? Of course, you're going to pick the effortless way because the effortless title means that you're going to get the results with very little work. That's why you want to use adjectives. It just helps get the clicks. And as I mentioned, evoking curiosity, the first title is one that I love. 10 Proven Benefits of Green Tea. Number three is very impressive. Like, number three is impressive? What is number three? Why? Oh, you're going to want to click through. Or 10 proven benefits of green three. Number three is going to shock you. Oh, wow. Number three is going to shock me? What is it? Now, once you optimize your title tags and you change it, after 30 days, because with Google Search Console, you can't do an A-B split test and run them simultaneously. More so, you got to change it. Wait 30 days and see what happens. Typically, your click-through rate should go up. And as it goes up, that's great. That means you're doing something right. If it goes back down, revert it back to the original, wait a few weeks to get that standardized line or wait another month and then test it after that. I also want to show you some examples of bad title tags and good title tags so you can really optimize your click-through rate. Think of this one. This one's from Harvard. Digital marketing. Improved digital marketing strategy and marketing. It's just too keyword rich. I'm not sure if I would ever want to click on it. Most people probably won't. Here's another one. Spa menu and massage. Health land spa and massage. Thai massage. Dot, dot, dot. It's just keyword rich. Doesn't really flow. It's not enticing. Another one. Teeth whitening, toothpaste, whitening kits. Drugstore.com. Again, just keyword rich. Not really too enticing. Here's a good example of title tag. Popular running shoes for women. Comfortable running sneakers. I'm like, oh, cool. These are the popular ones. These are the best ones. Oh, and best of all, they're comfortable. Who wants to buy shoes that are uncomfortable? Finding the right dog sitter for your pooch. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm looking for someone to babysit my dog. All right. That's a great one. The top 24 dog sitter profiles. Oh, yeah. I want to make someone, sure someone's really good and trusted. Oh, these are the top 24 ones. These are examples of good title tags. The best luxury hotels in the world. Ah, oh, this is crazy. I'm looking to travel the world. I want to stay at the best spots. These are the best ones in the world. So if you're not sure and you're still uncertain on what keywords to put in there, think of the phrase like what is, best, amazing, list stuff, how-to titles are effective, the word free, you, people like it when you're talking to them. So putting you in the, in the title tag creates more of a conversation. Tips, why, tricks, great. These are all good examples of phrases and words that work well. The fourth tool, Ahrefs. I know you're already familiar with Ahrefs. You've heard of it, but don't worry. I'm not going to show you some boring you know, Ahrefs report. I'm going to show you something unique in Ahrefs that less than 0.1% of you probably even use. I don't like talking about it much because I don't want a ton of competition. This is what I use heavily to build links. Um, it works exceptionally well. Most of you guys, when you're building links, and I don't mean this in a bad way because I'm going to show you something that's cool, is you're using basic email templates like this, like, hey, John, I have to say I'm a huge fan of your work, but I was reading xyandz.com, uh, or I was reading X, Y, and Z, whatever the article title is, that you wrote, and I noticed it didn't mention 
my company. If you mention my company, it would help your readers with, you know, like you list out a few points. Hope I didn't offend you. I just want people to love your writing like I do. Like these are all old school email templates. Funny enough, I was probably one of the reasons, not the reason, but only one of the reasons because a lot of marketers like me were telling, talking about them and sharing them. They just don't work anymore. And there's tons of them like, congrats on another great article. I just want to let you know that I love that you covered X, Y, and Z and, you know, building relationships. And then after they respond back, asking them to link to you. And these are all examples of stuff that I've used, other people have used. But you know what? As marketers and SEOs, we hate link building because these templates don't work that well. It's hard. Most people ignore these emails and it's rare to get a link. But I'm going to show you something that works really well. And this is why I love Ahrefs. Not because it costs money, it's because they have this feature called the Link Intersect. And if you don't have a ton of cash, you can use it for seven days for a $7 trial. What the Link Intersect does is, in the navigation, you have to click on More, then you have to click on Link Intersect. Again, it's not really prominent in their navigation, but it's the coolest feature. I can put in my competition, so I put in Moz, WordStream, Backlinko. Um, I know Brian Dean well, although he's, he's more of a friend of me. I, I love him to death. Uh, and I can also put in my website, so neilpatel.com, right? And I'm looking at this, and I'm like, all right, who links to my competition that doesn't link to me? And that's what the link intersect shows. The reason this is cool is if someone links to one of your competitors and you have hundreds of them, it doesn't mean they're going to link to you. But if they start linking to three, four, five, and if I go back to link intersect main page, you can click that plus sign and you can add more of your competitors. And if you see that someone's linking out to a lot of your competitors, there's a good chance that they'll also be willing to link to you. That's why I love the link intersect because now you have a targeted list of people who are open and receptive to linking to other players within your space, which means they'll link to you. And that's why the link intersect works better than most link building tactics. Everyone talks about writing amazing blog posts, creating infographics, and yeah, that stuff works. But just because you write a creative infographic or write an amazing blog post doesn't mean people are going to link to it. If you use the link intersect, you see who links to your competition, a lot of them, and there's a higher chance they'll link to you. Now, the fifth tool I love is click funnels. Some of you guys have heard the, you know, the concept of funnels. Some of you haven't. But everyone's like, how do I create a funnel? How does it work? Well, click funnels helps you create it. And I was doing a survey with like 268 or 200 and something companies all the way from people who make like a million bucks a year to companies who make a hundred plus million. And I found that the companies mainly spend majority of their marketing budget on Google AdWords, then Facebook, then SEO, content marketing, social media, and other. But here's the thing. Advertising over time is just getting more expensive. Google AdWords keeps going up in cost. So does Facebook ads. So what should you do? Well, your only real option is to build a funnel, a funnel, helps you get more upsells, downsells, cross-sells. And the beautiful part about ClickFunnels is you can create in minutes. And you don't have to use ClickFunnels. You can use any tool um, that has funnels. I don't know a ton of them. ClickFunnels is the main one I know. But again, what the cool part about it is it allows you, when someone buys from you, to sell them more products with just a click of a button or downsell them on other cheaper products or cross-sell them on other related products. And here's how it works. You sign up. You pick like what kind of funnel you want. It can be for any business, e-commerce, author, services. Like they have funnel templates for everything. You click whatever one's relevant. You even click like, oh, I like, I want it to look like this. I want to include a video. I don't want to include a video. Uh, you can even get stats and data on how many visitors you're getting, conversion rates, etc. Uh, and you can even do cool things like add checkout bumps. So on your checkout page, you can say like, oh, here's an extra bonus offer for six bucks. A lot of people will take you up on this. It doesn't reduce your conversion rates. It helps. Very few people do it. You should consider adding it. The last tool I have for you is BuzzSumo, technically the sixth tool. I have seven tools. Sorry about that. But BuzzSumo, the sixth tool for you. And you'll see why I mentioned last tool because the last one isn't really a tool, but it is a tool and I'll get to it in a bit. But the reason I love BuzzSumo is it can help you generate social shares without ads. Social media drives good traffic. As you can see from my site, you know, on a bad month, um, and this is one of my less popular sites, I get around 80,000 visitors a month. That's not too bad. Now, here's some basic stats from Neil Patel. 
social media on a very bad month without ads, you know, easily 80,000, I can get more. Uh, I think I averaged 130 to 140 last month. Uh, again, the screenshot I showed you is with Crick Sprout, which is another blog of mine. But with Neil Patel, I also get at least 80000 a month. Um, email drives over 60% of my social traffic. Social media users are 219% more likely to comment on blog posts. That's at least the stat for neilpatel.com. Social media users are two times more likely to link to me. We started cross-referencing all the people that are linking to us who are sharing our content on social media. It's not 100% accurate, but we found that social media engagers, like people who are sharing our content, were just much more likely to link to us and help promote us. I also released a site called Nutrition Secrets years ago. I ended up selling it. I got 35,000 visitors in the first 30 days, mainly through social media. So how do you get all these social shares without spending money on ads? Because everyone these days is saying like Facebook, it's too tough. You have to spend money on ads. And you know what? I do spend a little bit here and there, not much. And the reason being is I figured out how to get it without spending money on ads. You know, the ones I do spend money on when it comes to promoting on uh, Facebook, especially by paying for it, I do it because I know the post isn't going to do well and it's more so to help me make money. Well, the first thing you want to do is for every thousand words that you write in your blog post, try to link out to relevant sources. If it doesn't make sense to then don't, but typically you'll find that you'll link out like five to ten times. And as you link out, you know, you can email people and let them know that you link to them. And when you let them know that you link to them, this is Mike who ran Nutrition Secrets, he would send off emails. People would email back and they'd be like, oh, cool, sounds good. And he would get more links back. You also can post your content during good times, such as noon and 6 p.m. A lot of people are on the social web during those times. Sharing during the midweek like Wednesdays also does really well, and you can do all these things to time it. But here's an interesting strategy to use leveraging Twitter that most people are. So you first go to BuzzSumo. You type in articles related to the one that you're writing. You click on View Shares. You click on View Shares. And it'll show you all the people on Twitter who share that content. Then what I would do is I would hit up all those people. And the subject of that email would be the article that they shared. And it would be like, hey, John, I noticed you tweeted one of my favorite blog posts, how to double your search traffic in 30 days by author, I don't know, Ben Stiller. I actually have a content marketing guide that I'm sending out or an SEO guide that I'm sending out next week. It's very comprehensive and provides actional tips. Want well, heads up when it goes live? Cheers, Neil Patel. P.S. Let me know if there's anything I can help you with. Adding the P.S. is really effective even if you don't have a big brand. It really does help so you should consider uh, adding the P.S. And what you'll find is a ton of people will email you back once you fill in the template will just be like, yeah, sure, I want to check it out. And when they respond, you just email them back being like, here you go show them the URL and that's it and you'll find a lot of people will tweet it out. The last tool for you and this is why I kind of mentioned it's a tool but not really a tool is Google Trends and I know a lot of people don't use Google Trends as a tool but here's why I think it's important. Google loves brands. As Eric Schmidt the ex CEO of Google once said brands are the solution not the problem. Brands are how you sort out the cesspool. There's a lot of sites creating fake news and junk information. Brands is what Google looks at to determine who should rank higher. And the cool part about Google Trends is you can type in your brand name to see how you're doing. Are you going up? Are you going down? How can you keep growing your brand? Well, I'll give you some ideas for that as well. And what I found is as my brand increased, so did my search traffic. Like I saw a huge spike in 30 days and my search traffic just went through the roof for all terms that were non-brand related. Shows that Google loves ranking brands. So how do I build my brand and how can you build yours? Well, focus on PR and crazy marketing tactics. Um, there's a performance-based press guy named Chris Bear from a company called PR Serve, not service, that's a typo, PR Serve. And he helps you get performance-based press or technically he helps you get press and as he gets you press, he charges you. If he doesn't get you press, he doesn't charge you a dollar. Uh, you wanna leverage social media influencers. I think that's a good model as well. Uh, you can go on Instagram, uh, Facebook, all these places, pay them to promote your products. It could be a protein powder, getting all the fitness celebrities or models, promoting your protein powder it helps build a brand. Um, you can do the same thing if you're in fashion. Like if you have a tie, you can have all the fashion people 
you know, talk about your ties, your dresses, or whatever it is. And you also want to le leverage the rule of seven, in which when someone sees your brand seven times, they're much more likely to convert. So leverage tools like Mobile Monkey, so that way you can build up that subscriber base and continue to market to them. You can also use tools like Hello Bar and Subscribers. Hello Bar helps you collect more emails. Subscribers helps you collect more push notification subscribers. This all helps with your brand and your long-term increases. So that's it. Thank you for attending. Really appreciate it. Uh, I hope these tools will help you get more search traffic and just general more traffic and sales in 2019. Thanks.